Alright guys, thanks for joining me today on Instinctive Addiction Archery. I'm Jeff Phillips. I got a good one here for you today that I just hope and pray that you'll really find help. Because guys, you really, really don't want to make a mistake when it comes to broadhead choice. You don't. All the practice in the world, you can shoot all summer, you can work on your process, you can get, get your shot down, you can have everything right, your air is tuned. Man, you can have everything everything together then you can go to the woods and have absolute failure how your broadhead that's right guys i'm here to tell you all broadheads are not created equal no they are not my job is to help you make a wise choice on a broadhead for deer hunting okay now we're talking deer hunting here and the only reason i bring you this video is because I am non-stop testing, trying, doing everything I can to figure out what really increases your chances of success, mine and yours, okay? Face it, guys, we're not hunting with compounds. We're not hunting with crossbows. We're hunting with recurves and longbows, shooting generally always under 200 feet per second, right? Okay, so... Where do you come up with a combination that's going to give you the very optimum chance to put a deer down, okay, and recover it? Now, guys, the truth of it is any broadhead will kill a deer. It's a fact. Any broadhead on the planet. You can go to Walmart and buy a pack of $15 broadheads and kill deer. Absolutely you can if you double lung them or a heart shot, they're dead. You're going to kill a deer. You can kill a deer with a field point, okay? It will kill them, all right? Now, whether you'll find them or not, it's a different story, but it'll kill them, okay? So, what is most important, especially, let's say, in the evening? Say you go in, you climb, you hunt in the evening, and in the last 10, 15 minutes of shooting lights there, the shot presents itself, you get your nerves together, you make the shot, okay? Then comes time to blood trail. Guess what? No blood. Even with what appears to be a really good shot, you have no blood. How are you going to find a deer with no blood trail? It's almost impossible. If you do not see it pile up with inside of your stand, you may not find it. Unless you bring in a dog or something, you know, late that night or the next morning go back and grid search you may find it but guys we got to try to eliminate that the losses are way way too many okay it's story after story after story after story of lost deer okay and i'm bringing you this because i want to show you some of the testing that i've done kind of what i have found out to happen with various scenarios and what the truth is about traditional equipment, okay? We're not talking compounds, we're talking traditional. All right, so I'm gonna start, guys. I'm gonna start with a scenario, okay? And I'll give you a perfect example. We talk about penetration all the time. Build these heavy FOC arrows, arrows over 500 grains that will give you the most penetration possible, right? That's right. Sharpest, razor sharp, shave the hair off your arms, broadheads. I mean, just, just crazy sharp. It's what it takes, guys. You got to have that edge. If you want blood on the ground, you got to have a sharp head. Now, I'm going to start with the scenario just like this single bevel. Okay. This happens to be an Omega, and it is a single bevel that has a one and one sixteenth inch cut, right? Sounds good, except for one thing, minimal blood trail, very minimal blood trail. Kills quick, has great penetration, astounding penetration, but guess what? It just doesn't cause a massive, nasty blood trail. No, it does not, okay? So, where's the trade-off? I mean, there's got to be one, guys. Do you go for penetration or do you go for blood? I'm going for blood. I'm going for blood. You know why? 
because without the blood trail, I can't find my deer, period. It doesn't matter what, I can't find it. Generally, unless I bring in a dog or a drone or something, I can't find a deer without a blood trail, usually if I don't see it fall. So, where I'm going with this, guys, is I want you guys to make reasonable decisions on your broadheads. Now, I shared in a previous video a scenario that happened with me with one of these exact heads right here. That is a grizzly. That's a 200 grain grizzly single bevel head. Same cutting diameter as this Omega. It's just longer, but it puts the same exact cut on. Will it kill deer? Absolutely it'll kill deer. And I had this thing razor, razor sharp. And I'm talking sharp, sharp, hair splitting sharp. But I got a complete pass through right behind the shoulder complete pass through on a doe she runs 150 yards before i find that deer the next morning with literally no blood one or two drops that's all i even got almost not even a blood trail did it kill her absolutely it killed her she was dead she was dead within minutes of the shot but did that help me find that deer no it did not okay so when that happened, I shied away a, a little bit from, from that type of head just because of that, because it, it was just discouraging because I didn't get a lot of blood trail, but it did kill it. Now, you take this same design and you verse this against, say, a Magnus Stinger. It'll do the same thing, unless it's a buzz cut. If you run a buzz cut with serrated edges on it, much more blood. Bleeders, much more blood. It's a fact. This is like stabbing a deer with a knife. It, it, it just is. I mean, there's not a massive, massive hole to bleed out. It's not. Okay. Will it kill deer again? Absolutely. Will it kill them quick? Absolutely. But will you have good blood? Probably not. All right. So guys, on to some different stuff. You think, what then do I need to go with? I mean, I'm not promoting any one broadhead over another because there's so many great ones out there. I get broadheads sent to me all the time to test and to try and you know figure out what, what I like, what I don't like, what works, what doesn't work. And, and I put my honest, honest, honest thoughts into these things and I really, truly do try to test them. I do. Live game testing is the best there is. Well, let me show you one. I'll show you the first one up and then we're gonna to proceed to something else. But I'm gonna show you something that might, might be the best choice you'll ever make. If, number one, you're a guy that does not like to spend time sharpening a broadhead. If you don't like to sit down and just sharpen and sharpen and sharpen, uh, it, it, you know, if it's not you, you wanna open a pack and have a hair splitting broadhead that cuts a massive wound channel, I'm gonna show you one, guys. I'm gonna show you one that was sent to me. There it is. Tooth of the arrow. XL. Tooth of the arrow. Solid tool grade steel, machined out of one, one bar of steel. Four inch total cut. You see that? Four inch total cut. You say, well, my God, what do these things look like? Well, I'm gonna show you. There they are, guys. There they are. Is that wicked or what? That is one wicked little head. And when I tell you they're sharp out of the pack, you don't touch them. They send a plastic little tool to take them on and off because you don't go touching these. You will get cut. They're that kind of sharp. Tooth of the arrow, XLs. These things right here, guys, I got these sent in in 150 grain. So I had these little black eagle instincts little fast super fast little arrows and a 500 spine i had these bear shaft tuned for five, 150 grain heads right so that's what i put them on i have not shot a deer with them yet but i'm planning on it okay they're fast as lightning and they shoot just like field tips these do not steer they shoot like field tips but they're a choice okay so 150 grain this thing has four inches of total cut it's unbelievable silent flight because these are solids 
They are solids. They don't have vents to make any noise. So this is a choice. If you say, well, Jeff, what can I go with that's gonna cut a big hole? Well, Tooth of the Arrow touts that these things cut square holes that cannot close up, that it actually cuts a square hole. And I believe it because a four blade is going to cut a massive wound channel. And I'm gonna tell you now, as sharp as these are, I don't see how you couldn't put one down instantly. I don't see how it would be possible as sharp as they truly are. I mean, I just don't see how you, you could go wrong because a head like this is gonna do some serious damage, guys, serious damage. I mean, they just are. So there's your choice. Out of the pack, razor sharp, devastating heads. All right, now, what about a three blade? Well, you can't go wrong with a three blade, like a VPA. That's a VPA right there, 200 grain, three blade head. I've killed lots of deer with these heads. And buddy, they leave some blood. I mean they leave a hole. These heads are just awesome, but you gotta work to sharpen them. You got to put the time in to get them sharp. Tool grade steel, you gotta work them. But will they put down a deer and leave plenty of blood on the ground? Absolutely they will. You better believe they will. So to me, that's still a far better choice. Here you have two kinds of heads that to me for blood trails are far superior to the knife style. Okay, they are. Now, what I want to get at with these, with these heads before I move on, I want to look at this mechanical advantage, okay, that a single bevel gives you, okay? Mechanicals, I mean, mechanical advantage single bevel heads are designed to split bone. How? Because when the arrow is rotating, these are left bevel, I mean, left wing feathers, therefore it's rotating left, going through the air right there. It's rotating. When it enters bone, it is designed, because this is the flat side, this is the beveled side, it is designed to split a bone open and drive through and get into the vitals, right? That's what they're designed for with the Tonto head. That's why they make these things, guys. They do. Blood trails are not really the, the deal with them. I mean, yes, they will leave a good blood trail if you put it through the boiler, get some heart, get a low exit, a low exit is going to spill a blood trail. I don't care what you shoot one with. But let's say you don't get a low exit. Let's say you're mid-body. Let's just say it comes out mid-body. Are you gonna get a massive blood trail on the ground with a deer running? No, you're not. But will it split bone? Yes, it will. Here's the question. Will it do it with a recurve or a longbow? Good question, huh? Very good question, guys. I'm gonna give you a scenario that happened two days ago to me. I shot a doe. I'm gonna show you exactly what happened. 48 pound recurve, shooting on my chronograph with these arrows at 187 feet per second. Running a 530 grain arrow. Shot a doe. This is what I got, guys. It's what I got. I hit the back of the front shoulder, right, right at the rear of the shoulder, slightly, slightly quartering away. The arrow obviously hit the offside shoulder and stopped when it hit the offside shoulder. That's what I got. Nothing crazy, but you know what? I really expected a whole lot more because in theory, I'm thinking, well, this single bevel razor sharp head's gonna blast through a deer like hot butter. Well, no, it did not. It did not. This deer turns, runs right under my tree and snaps this arrow off. See the blood still on it, guys? There's there's blood still on the still on the white shaft there. This is a bare bow arrow. She broke this arrow off. Okay, and that much there was left in her. Of course it killed her. Did I have any blood? Near zero. Near zero. I literally found two drops of blood. Pretty much it. And I mean, I, I went, I saw right where this deer ran, right under my tree, there was a hole that she ran through, headed out the woods. I mean, I, I watched her and I followed it. And I'm like, where is the blood? This deer is dead over here. Where is the blood? 
Where? I'm not about that, guys. I am not about that. I'm about something that's going to put them down fast and is going to make them bleed. Okay? That's just me personally. So, I have one more option and then another one behind that I'm going to show you guys that you might find to be very interested in. And there again, I'm just trying to help you decide what head, what type of head, not brand, but what type to even go with. Okay, number three. Actually, one, two, three, four. This is number four. That is an Exodus three blade. That is an Exodus 125 grain head. And I would say that this Exodus probably has the sharpest blades of anything I've ever seen in my life. Probably so. And they're very tough blades. These are German steel. And when I say razor sharp, it's just crazy. Crazy how sharp these things are. And they fly like a field tip. And they are very tough heads. Okay. Now, compound oriented heads, yes. But are they a good option for traditional? Absolutely. Why? Because they don't plane, fly like a field tip, put some weighted insert behind them, build up your FOC, and you're going to cut a hole that's just not going to quit bleeding. You're going to just zip through something with, with a head that sharp and no bigger than that diameter is. And I don't know if it's quite as big as the XL. I don't think it is. But I'm going to say this and still has a lot of cutting surface. It does. It's got a lot. Uh, I would be very confident shooting a deer with something like that, guys. I would. Okay, so. Those of you are out of the pack. Don't have to sharpen killer broadheads, right? When all else fails and you say, Jeff, well, what are you shooting now? What, 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 out of all these broadheads, what is your go-to? Well, I can tell you, there is, that's, that's a no-brainer, guys. <laughs> that's a no-brainer. I ain't playing. There it is. That's her. You want to put a deer down, and I mean put them down, a razor sharp, and buddy, I can get these things super sharp. I use a three-sided jewel stick, and I do it just like a knife, and I'll, I'll, I've got one video out now where I'm just stroking it back, but I have done figured out even past that how to get them so much sharper than even that, and that is strictly by doing a circular motion, just like you do an Omega broadhead on sandpaper. The circular motion is what makes them shape and sharp. You can do that on a jewel stick the same exact way, just holding the angle and just, I mean, literally just a couple of minutes, and you can have these things scary sharp. But guys, here's the deal. Since I didn't get a pass-through, since it didn't go all the way through the deer anyway, and left a little hole with no blood, what would have happened if I had made that same shot? Same shot and got all the way into that offside shoulder with a cut like this, what would have happened? There would have been blood like carpet. It would have been red carpet all the way because everything I've ever shot with a Simmons head has been nasty, nasty. And they fly just like a field tip. I love them. I love these heads. So that's what I'm shooting in my quiver, guys. I got them in there and I am not changing them, okay? We've got tons of options. Tons and tons and tons of options. We do. On broadheads. But, when it comes to putting something down, and I mean putting them down, what counts is how fast you can put it down and how much blood you get. Because face it, if you're out there in the middle of the woods, especially if you're on public land, sometimes miles in, out there with flashlights you're you're way away from the truck and you're on a blood trail at night in the black dark how are you possibly going to find your deer if you don't have good blood how you're probably not okay so that's why i'm shooting the simmons heads okay now all the other heads are good and they're guys are posting kills with everything that i just mentioned 
every head on this list and many more. Kill, 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 good looking holes, good blood trails, good everything. I am not saying that, guys. I'm not. Just like these grizzly heads. You can read article after article about these fabulous blood trails time after time if you want to. But I'm telling you, for me, for me, no, sir. No, sir. They have let me down big time on what should have been and there again, how much you cut is how much a deer bleeds, right? How many arteries you cut tells how much bleeding that deer's gonna do. The shape of a Simmons, the shape of them, that concave cut, when that thing goes in a deer and does what it does it just absolutely devastates it okay it does that's what i killed my my buck with last year my biggest trad kill ever and 40 yards he's flipped upside down he's done toast done and a hole you can stick your fist in okay it's it was gory completely gory all right so that's why I'm shooting them, guys. I, I, I'm not trying to just put a little, a little tiny hole in something and follow pin drops. I'm not trying to do all that. I'm shooting a slow bow with not a whole lot of power. And I, I've got to do some damage. I mean, some damage when I shoot one. I've got to. It's the only hope I've got, okay? So, I'm gonna get to why I like a quiet broadhead and it has to be structurally just absolutely strong, a strong head, but it's got to be sharp, guys. So it all goes back to the thing of what does it take to put a deer down? Razor sharp is number one. Razor sharp broadhead is number one. It is, razor sharp, well-tuned, a stiff enough spine that when you hit the deer, okay guys, when you hit, that your arrow is not sitting here doing this number, okay? Losing, losing all of the momentum, all of the kinetic energy leaving. In other words, as soon as it hits, as soon as it makes contact, guess what? A weak arrow is gonna sit here and just flop and it's gonna try to drive in. It's gonna be doing this number right here trying to go into the, to the animal. You don't want that. You got to spine your arrow stiff enough, stiff enough that they're going to fly the head Straight and true, but not too stiff. Why do you not want to go too stiff on your air tube? Because 99% of the time, you short draw the bow when you're in a hunting situation. If you're ever going to short draw a bow, it's going to be when you're in the heat of the moment hunting. You're going to find yourself, no matter what, you're going to find yourself short drawing. Instead of really getting in, you're going to short draw and shoot. Guess what? That's going to stiffen up your spine a lot. So when you're tuning an arrow, tune it slightly weak. And I mean slightly on a bare shaft. And when I say slightly, I'm talking maybe this much, this much tail left at the most. But you don't want it stiff. You don't. Because if you short draw, then it's really going to be stiff. And if you think about it, guys, when it leaves that bow, it's not going to be able to recover. It's not. Okay, so let's just say you get your aerotine right. You get all that stuff hooked up. You get everything good. You got to pick a broadhead that's going to put a deer down and put it down quick. I don't know what else to tell you guys. I don't. These companies make so good of heads, just like this Omega. VPA is a top-notch company, top-notch company. And these heads flat out are killing deer. There's guys got pictures everywhere of deer down with these. And even me, I've got one. I killed one, no problem. But I felt like I should have had a little bit more blood. And maybe, maybe it's because I didn't get a low exit through the heart, whatever. Okay, okay. Benefit of the doubt. I don't have any, any don'ts about this head at all because it is a penetrator it's a penetrator flat out but they're terribly expensive too 
I mean, they're not cheap. Most guys are not wanting to spend, you know, $35 plus on or more on, on per head, per broadhead, not, not a pack, but per head. Most guys are not. So everybody I talk to, they're a little bit more budget minded. They're like, okay, man, what can I buy for under 50 bucks? You know, where I can go hunt. Well, tooth of the air. There you go. Exodus. VPA, three blades. Get you a three blade. Devastate some deer. I mean, a deer doesn't have a chance when you shoot it with something like that, when it's sharp. I mean, they, they don't. You're gonna have good blood. There's no doubt about it, and good penetration. I mean, these, these heads really do penetrate well. <laughs> they do. Opposed to that style. Eh, there's just so much more. Think about it, guys. So much more. So much more cutting surface. Cutting surface. That's where it's at. So, with all that being said, that's, that's where we're at, guys. I recommend... If you're an out-of-the-pack guy, get you something razor sharp, get you a three or four blade that's sharp as all get out, out of the pack, and go hunt. Make a good shot. Put it where it counts, okay? If you don't mind a little bit of sharpening, get you a shark. I mean, you just can't go wrong. I mean... Guys, honestly, you, you just cannot go wrong with salmon sharks if you want to kill critters. I mean, it, it's just a fact. It is, okay? Because, <coughs> excuse me, I don't know that a traditional bow has enough speed and momentum to actually split bone. I don't know that it does. I don't know that we're dealing with the same effect that a compound would shoot in that head. If a compound was shooting that head, you could shoot through one long ways. It don't matter which way he was pointing. You could take him out. Okay, end of story. But with a recurve, mm, I'm just not completely sold on a trad bow having the kind of speed and momentum to just go to splitting bones. And I, I understand the Ashby reports. I do. I believe in them. I am a believer. I'm a supporter. But also, extremely close range and extremely high poundage bows. I don't shoot 70-pound bows. I shoot 40 and 45. 27-inch draw stuff. I'm not shooting 60 and 70-pound trad bows with 750, 800-grain arrows. I'm not doing it. I'm shooting 500-grain arrows with 45 pound bows or less, typically. And I even shot this 530 at a 48 pound bow and I still didn't get through it. It still, it still stopped on the off side shoulder. It, it just did, okay. Which is, is expected, it is. Uh, it, it truly is, but guys, I'm just saying, if you think you're gonna just blow through just cause you put a single bevel head on, that you're gonna blast through everything you shoot, even with a five, five or six hundred grain arrow out of a recurve or longbow. I think you're gonna be disappointed. I think you're in for some disappointment with that. But will you get good penetration? Absolutely, you're going to. Absolutely, it will get good penetration. But there's limits. There's limits to everything traditional, guys. You better just make a good shot. You better put it behind that shoulder. You better get in a little bit of a softer area there where you can get some penetration and get in the bullet. It's all it boils down to. So, guys, thank you for joining me today on Instinctive Addiction Archery. I'm Jeff Phillips. Love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you hadn't subscribed, hit that button. I appreciate it more than you know. I uh, love bringing you this stuff, guys, and I'm actually going back to the woods this evening. Uh, going to try my best to put one of these Simmons heads through here and uh, do a deer. And uh, <laughs> that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Late October, it's great bow hunt, guys. Uh, love it, love it, love it. So thank you again. Pray that everything we do bring honor and glory to the good Lord above. It gives us all things to enjoy, including tinkering with broadheads. Thank you, guys. Till next time, goodbye.